Welcome to this new life. We are so glad you are watching. And I believe today that God has something amazing for you to discover. I'm going to start a series of four episodes where we are going to um, share about uh, great promises that God has given to us. So um, welcome to uh, an exciting four part series of this new life. The scripture we are going to share from is from Psalm 103, verse 2, 3 and 4. So let's read this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Forget not all his benefits. Do you know that living a life believing in God, living a life having Jesus um, as your Lord and Master, is a life with a lot of blessings and benefits added to it. And here we read um, four benefits that I would like over the next four parts of this new life to share with you. The first thing is that we need to be aware that God is a good God and that he has an amazing plan for us. We're going to read another wonderful scripture from the prophet of Jeremiah chapter 29, where God is revealing his thoughts that is for you and for me. No matter who you are, no matter of your present belief, these thought is for every person of those eight billion people living on this earth. This is a scripture for you. From Jeremiah chapter 29, we're going to read verse 11 and verse 12. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. God has a plan for you, a plan and a purpose. There's a reason you're living. There's a God in heaven who has uniquely created you. You're not just a simple person that is um, a result of a man and a woman that have had love. No, the Bible says that you are in the thought and heart of God. And God is a good God. He has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for you to live in. And um, it's, a, it's a plan full of future and hope. I think this is a wonderful scripture to hang on to in uh, uh, these years as we're living in that is so full of many different things that can make fear. There's pandemics, there's wars, there's rumors of war, there's financial struggles and things like that. That there is a God in heaven that cares for us. He has a plan for us. But maybe you think, oh, but that's all fine. But God is so far away. Does he really care for us? Is he really a God that knows me? And, and uh, he's up there in heaven and I'm here on earth. And so what? And can we trust the promises God has given to us? Well, there's a wonderful scripture in, in the Bible. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. That is a key scripture. And this scripture sounds like this. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him amen to the glory of God through us. Who is the him that the Bible is speaking about here? That person is Jesus Christ. This scripture is saying that all the promise God has given all through the Bible has been fulfilled and have had their yes. This means that they have come into reality in Christ Jesus. Now imagine this. God is sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to this earth 2,000 years ago. He's not just coming to make a new religion or doing good to poor and sick and needy people in his time. No, he's coming for a greater and a deeper purpose. 
He's coming to fulfill all the promises that God has given to mankind. Mankind that He loves. No matter of your skin color, no matter of your background, no matter of your social status, no matter if you're a man or woman, young, old, no matter where you are at at the point in life, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, that in Him all the promises that Jesus, that God has made, has Jesus come to fulfill. They were all included in Jesus. That's why when we read about the life of Jesus as He was walking here on earth, He was doing good to the poor and needy. He was healing the sick. He was, he was forgiving people their, their um, uh, sins. He was recovering them. He was giving them brand new chances and new start. That's why Jesus, He came. That's truly what God wants for us to happen. That's why He sent His Son, Jesus. And that's why Jesus was crucified on the cross. The Bible says that it was on the cross that Jesus paid for all the mistakes and sins that has disqualified us from the promises and from the eternal life that God has waiting for us. All the promises that God has ever made were all included for Jesus to come and fulfill. And over the next four episodes of this new life, we are going to look closer to those four promises that we read that God gave here in Psalm 100 and three, as we read in the beginning. The four promises is this. He wants to forgive our sins. He wants to heal our sicknesses. He wants to crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. And He wants to redeem us from destruction. Now, before we go to the first point, what's this video? Last week we were talking about how God wants to forgive all your iniquities. Now the next promise in this scripture was that He wants to heal all your diseases. Do you know that God is a God who cares for our bodies? There's so many things in this healing that, that um, I still can't you know, explain why did that happen and why did that not happen and so on. But the Bible speaks clearly that God cares for us, also for our bodies. We will read now from Isaiah chapter 53, where there is, uh, the entire chapter is actually a prophecy that is in detail describing how Jesus was crucified on the cross. Something that happened years later when Jesus was giving his life on the cross. Let's read one of the, just one of the verses that is from uh, verse 5. For he, that's Jesus, was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. How amazing this is. That Jesus, when he died on the cross, he did not only die for our sins to be forgiven, but it was the redemption of the entire mankind whether you're a woman or a man, or whether you're young or old, He died for your total salvation, your total redemption for Him and you to live together in fellowship. Now we are still, obviously, still living under this um, 
life that is, that is causing that our body slowly just deteriorate, just slowly becomes weaker and weaker. Oh, I wish it would not have been like that, but it is like that. And still we see how Jesus Christ, he's also coming and sharing his healing because he paid for our healing on the cross. Well, the Bible says how when we die, when we pass away from this earth, we will come to paradise and there we will get new, a new life, new body, okay, for eternal life to live with God. That body will have no sickness and whatever you might be struggling with right now physically, it will not be in that new body of yours when we get to heaven. But with that being said, we still have a life to live here on earth. And God has a channel of healing that he still already now wants to share with us. That's why Jesus paid for our healing on the cross. There's a powerful scripture in the book of Acts chapter 10 that is really pinning out how God's thought for our healing was following and shown really sharply in the life of Jesus. Acts ch chapter 10 verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. How God anointed Jesus, his son, so that he was, when he was walking here in ministry about 2000 years ago, he was doing good. He was healing people, he was setting people free because that is the heart of God. Even though we are not yet there, God has still made a way for this to happen. That's why when we read about Jesus, he never made anyone sick. There's not one example in the gospel where Jesus is coming and cursing somebody with cancer or making somebody blind or making somebody deaf. It was just the opposite. Wherever Jesus was going, people had their lives restored back. Also, when it comes to healing, he was healing the sick. He was the, making the leprosy uh, clean again. He was making the deaf to hear. He was making the blind to see. Yes, even there is examples that every now and then people were raised from the dead back to life because of Jesus. This speaks to me that Jesus is truly this, the incarnation and the image we should have of God that God cares for you, also your sickness. I have seen this many times. We have for more than three decades been ministering and praying for people's needs, no matter what needs it might be. It's not that we have seen everybody being healed. I'm just honest to you now. And still we have seen a lot of miracles. And I would like to show you just a few videos now with testimonies of healing. Partially deaf and was totally blind. And this is the son who is confirming that this is all true. And now this man can see. This man began by him like talk out through us and now Emmy can look him. Will you touch my nose, please? Touch him, try to handle him. <laughs> She's been there for both years since 1987. And you can confirm that it's true that she could not hear? Yes, it's true. Now she can hear. Hallelujah. Mama, you know what I'm saying? The pastor told me about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I think this was very encouraging to watch, wasn't it? To see how deaf was hearing and blind was seeing again. 
not because of me, but because of God, of what Jesus has done on that cross. So I'll encourage you that you also today will believe for healing. Years ago in the 90s, I was living in Africa together with my family. It was a wonderful time. But one morning, my wife and I got quite a shock. Our little daughter, she was one year old by then, would not wake up. First, we thought that maybe she had been swallowing something. So I grabbed her in her legs and started to shake her. She was already now turning totally uh, pale and her lips were turning blue and it seems like she was not breathing. There was no life in her eyes. And I'm not a physical doctor, but uh, to me, it looks like she had been passed away. We were, of course, in a split second in a world of turmoil. A minute ago, everything looked wonderful, and now all of a sudden we were in this situation. We started to pray for her. We were desperate. We were calling on the name of Jesus. And then finally, it was like life were coming back. She started to blink again with her eyes. So what we did was this, that we rushed in the car and we drove as fast as we could to a nearby small hospital. The Italian doctor at that hospital looked at us, looked at our daughter, and then she said, I know what this is. This is malaria in your daughter's brain. The most dangerous kind of malaria you can have. And the doctor said this, well, she has up to 42 centigrade in fever. We'll give her the best medication we can, but I cannot guarantee that it will help. We will give her three days. And if the fever has not left her within the three days, she will either die or she will be in coma for the rest of her life. We received the medication for our doctor. And those next few days was really difficult days for us. We were believers of Jesus, so of course we were praying for our daughters again and again. Oh, I was holding up the promises of God and say, God, your word says. And in one moment, we were full of faith and believing that she will be well again. But then the next moment, we would be full of despair and doubt. And, and for days, the first two days, it was going like this. Then the third day came, the last day. We were trying to call some doctor friends of us that was living far away. We told them about the situation, about our daughter, about the medication and treatment, how nothing has changed, her fever is still sky high, and how she was truly not doing well. The more we explained, the more quiet our friends became. And all they said at the end was, we are sorry. There's nothing more that can be done. This was a really heavy message to get. We had hoped that there would be a little bit help. Thanks God for doctors and medication and for hospitals. And we should consider that a tremendous blessing. And we should receive it as a help that God has sent to us. But on top of that, there's also a God in heaven who cares for us. We kept praying for our daughter. And when it came to midnight, the, the third day, we gathered a few of our friends in that tiny little poor kitchen where we were living. And I said, will you please pray together with me one more time for our daughter as the last time we will offer prayers. And they said, of course we will. And when we were just about to start to pray, something happened. It was like the presence of God was showing up. The glory of God was coming. It was just like Jesus was stepping into that little kitchen far out in Africa there. 
We looked at one another. We couldn't see Jesus, but we really felt the presence of God. We started to look at one another and all of a sudden, it was like all those burdens were taken off. They were lifted off our hearts and shoulders. We were looking at one another. We started to laugh and and to jump around being so excited. We knew somehow we were not alone in this, but Jesus was there. I don't know for how long this was taking place, but it took place for quite a while. And then this really heavy presence of God ascended again. We looked at one another and then I said, let's quickly pray a little prayer for our daughter. We did so. Then I went from the kitchen into our bedroom and there our daughter was healed and completely well. Jesus had healed her. We brought her next day to the hospital. The doctors were shocked. They said, we can't believe this. We knew that her chances were very low and small. And now they were Christians also. They looked at her and gave God praise for what Jesus has done in our daughter's life. I will share this story to encourage you. We have been in these difficult places in our lives. We are standing there with sick children. We have been sick ourselves, but we are believing Jesus can help and he can help you. Let me just share another great testimony I did here some years ago. We were preaching in a festival. And as always, we preach about how Jesus wants to uh, save our soul. And at the end of every service, we pray for the sick and needy. And then it's up to God what he's doing and for people to receive it. The first woman coming to the platform that night was a woman in her 40s. She told us her story. She was not a believer. When she was 20 years old, 20 years ago, she was in an accident. There she broke both her legs, causing her to be unable to walk. She didn't get the proper treatment and her her legs simply grew back together in a way that caused her not to be able to walk. Then some friends of her did hear about this festival and told her, come with us, we will carry you to this festival. But she didn't want to come. She said, no, I don't believe in this and I don't want to come to this. But her friends took her anyway. And there she said she was sitting way in the back, just watching and listening to my preaching. And then she said this. All of a sudden, while I was preaching, she saw Jesus was standing right in front of her. I never saw Jesus, but she saw Jesus. He was standing right there in front of her. And she said, and Jesus Christ spoke to me, she said. He said to her, arise and walk. And then she felt the glory, the power of God coming over her body. So she stood up and she started to walk. What a miracle she had experienced. I saw myself how she was coming, walking the stairs to the platform and walking up to me at the platform. As she was sharing this, tears were running down her cheek because she was so glad. Jesus Christ came. This is recently. The Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Hebrew 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same today. He knows your situation right where you are at. And I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for the sick right now. And I believe that you can experience the same as this woman, as my daughter, that God is coming to touch your life. It's not me doing it. I cannot do miracles. But why don't we believe the God in heaven that he can do a miracle in your life? 
If you want to be included in this prayer, put your hand upon your sick body part right now or upon your heart. Close your eyes and believe and pray to Jesus. Don't pray to any other name, but pray to Jesus and say, Jesus, heal me. I need you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you. We thank you that you paid on the cross for us to have a life with you, even for our healing. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you now will touch he is sick bodies wherever they are sitting and located around the globe right now and that you will heal them in the name of Jesus for whatever sickness they are facing and struggling with we will pray for it and we will believe you and we give you thanks and glory in the name of Jesus we pray amen maybe you sit and you think oh it seems like nothing happened well why don't you keep believing that Jesus is going to heal you someday. And by the way, is Jesus Christ your Savior and your Lord? If He's not, and you want Him to be your Savior of your soul, to forgive your sins and give you eternal life, then put your hand upon your heart right now and pray together with me this important prayer from your heart. Jesus Christ, I believe you are the Son of God. Forgive my sins, save my soul. I will believe in you, I will follow you. You shall be my Savior, you shall be my Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now it's important that you keep yourself close to Jesus every day the rest of your life. Number one. Pray to Jesus every day. You can pray to him at any time, at any position, at any place. Number two, when we read in the Bible, we'll learn more about Jesus. Or maybe you say, oh, but I don't have a Bible. Then maybe you have a smartphone from where you can download the Bible. Then you have the Bible. And number three, it's a great strength to meet with others who is a followers and believers of Jesus Christ. But maybe you sit and you think, but I don't know of any, and there's not a Christian church in the area here. Then why don't you have fellowship through this TV channel, watching these programs on this channel? In that way, you will have fellowship with other believers. Or you're welcome to call and contact our call center for more information, for prayers, and for advice in your situation. You have been watching this new life. Hope to see you again next week where we are going to read about the point redeem. Yeah, Jesus wants to redeem us from destruction. Maybe you live or know of somebody who lives being in depression or bound by alcohol or drugs and need to be redeemed. Why don't you bring them to watch this program next week? Hope to see you next week in this new life. God bless you.